Coming up, as the vaccine becomes available to more kids, San Diego Unified is providing shots on site ahead of a deadline for in-person learning. Two men are arrested after a crash into a North County restaurant. Plus, sometimes it takes a village to help you find your lost car. The local man who parked downtown and then forgot where. And Independence Day finally arrives for Britney Spears. More than a week after kids ages five and up became eligible to get the COVID-19 vaccine, San Diego Unified is now providing those vaccines on site throughout the district. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. The district has teamed up with UC San Diego and its mobile vaccine unit. Today it was set up outside the Board of Education. As News 8's Shannon Handy reports, this comes ahead of the San Diego Unified requirement to have students age 16 and older vaccinated by winter break. Between now and up until the beginning of Christmas break, you can expect to see this van stationed at schools all over the county. District officials say they want to make it easy for not only students, but community members to get their vaccine. Instead of going to school Friday, San Diego Met High School senior Vanessa Castro visited this mobile vaccine unit outside San Diego Unify headquarters. It was very easy, very simple. Unlike some of her classmates, Vanessa is already vaccinated. Her mom is as well. They came here today to get their booster shots. Being young, I think we have a lot of responsibility to ensure that this pandemic doesn't continue to spread. As a parent, I was a little hesitant about, you know, the kids having to get vaccinated. But when you read about the information on the vaccine, it's safe. Throughout the day, other parents and their kids lined up to do the same. The district has partnered with UC San Diego to provide on-site vaccines for students and their families, as well as staff and community members at various campuses throughout the district, specifically in areas where vaccine rates are low. You don't need an appointment. For students, a guardian or parent must be present unless the mobile unit is at your child's school, in which case they'll need a signed release. This new mobile access comes ahead of a vaccine mandate for San Diego Unified. To attend school in person, students 16 and up must have their second dose by December 20th. If not, they'll have to enroll in the district's online program. The vaccine requirement will only apply to students once they're in an age group that we have full FDA approval of the vaccines. And so right now, that is only 16 and older. Still, district leaders are encouraging all students to get the vaccine. Last week, the CDC authorized the Pfizer vaccine for kids five and older. That authorization, along with a vaccine mandate for students, has sparked outrage from parents, many of whom believe it should be a choice. UCSD pediatrician Dr. Howard Terrace argues the benefits outweigh the risks. The virus itself can land you in hospital, can kill you. So when you compare that to the very unlikelihood that this vaccine is going to have much worse side effect than any other vaccine, the plan to vaccinate is really the obvious wiser choice. Next week, the van will be at middle and high schools within the district. If you'd like to see a list of locations, we have that up on our website. Just go to CBS8.com and click on the help button. Thanks, Shannon, and students in National City rolled up their sleeves today to get their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. The National City School District is now offering the shots to 5 to 11 year olds before and after school. It's a community that's been hit hard by COVID and the mayor and the school board president say they want to make getting the shot as convenient as possible for parents. Many of us have lost loved ones. We are still in the pandemic. It is clear to me that the vaccine is the answer. The clinic will be setting up on different days at each of the elementary schools in the district. For a full schedule, you can go to CBS8.com and click on this story. If you are fully vaccinated and want a booster shot, <clears throat> excuse me, there are new rules here in California. The state health officials say COVID-19 vaccine boosters are now available to all adults in the state, regardless of age or health. If you think you will benefit from getting a booster shot, I encourage you to go out and get it supplies available. The federal government has still only recommended a booster shot for seniors or people who are at high risk or those who work in healthcare settings. The updated state guidance comes as California health officials get ready for a possible winter surge.
Our November heat wave continued today. It was hot out there, yeah. but will we have to turn on those air conditioners this weekend? Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis is here early with a first look at your microclimate forecast. Carlene. So it's going to be hot. It's not going to be as hot as it was today, but we're still talking about above seasonal temperatures by this weekend. Take a look at how we shaped up for today. We had 90s, widespread 90s west of the mountains, even stretching to the coast, and we had some record breaking heat today. We had that for downtown at 92, 96. For Vista, the same for Escondido broke records previously in the low 90s back in 1974. So it was a pretty warm year. Taking a look at your highs for tomorrow, we're still talking about being above seasonal, but it's going to be a little bit cooler than it was cooler than it was today. So you're talking about those 80s for uh, your highs, widespread 80s, 88 degrees for Ramona, 89 degrees for El Cajon, 88 for Escondido, even still seeing some 80s closer towards the coast, as well as some 70s. We'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast. We do have much cooler temperatures by next week coming up. Back to you. That is good to hear. Thanks, Carlene. After nearly 14 years, pop star Britney Spears is free of the conservatorship that has ruled her life. It was a party-like atmosphere outside the Los Angeles courthouse where a judge made the ruling. Anthony Pura reports. Free Britney! When we wanted! No! Friday became Independence Day for Britney Spears. Britney, as of today, is a free woman, and she's an independent woman, and the rest, with her support system, will be up to Britney. On Friday, a Los Angeles judge freed the pop singer from the legal conservatorship that has ruled her life for nearly 14 years. And a large crowd of her fans turned out to support her on one of the most important days of her life. You know, she lost so many years of her life. All right, I'm going to go watch it. I'm just, I'm just so happy she could get her life back. Britney's father, Jamie Spears, had overseen his daughter's affairs and finances since 2008 when she suffered an apparent mental health crisis. At a June court hearing, Britney Spears called the conservatorship traumatizing and told the judge she wanted her life back. She said she was being forced to take medication against her will, was prevented from tending to personal tasks, and was not allowed to marry her longtime boyfriend. In September, the judge called Jamie Spears' involvement toxic to his daughter's well-being and temporarily replaced him. But by then, Jamie Spears said he supported terminating the conservatorship. Shortly after that hearing, Brittany became engaged and said she wants to have more children. I'm ready for her to just go sit in her palace and just chill and, you know, take this freedom and do whatever she wants with it. Spears' father has said through his attorneys that he has always acted in his daughter's best interests and has helped her rehabilitate her career. Anthony Pura, CBS News, Los Angeles. Britney Spears' attorney says he will pursue an investigation into Jamie Spears' handling of the conservatorship. Two men from the North County are in jail tonight, accused in a carjacking that ended in a horrific crash into a restaurant last night. Escondido police say the pair carjacked a person at Knife Point and stole a Subaru in an Oceanside parking garage. Later that night, the Subaru was spotted in Escondido, swerving in traffic, then running a red light and slamming into a pickup truck, crashing into Frida's Fish Tacos on East Valley Parkway. Investigators say the driver of that pickup was thrown from his vehicle and suffered life-threatening injuries. Fortunately, the restaurant's dining room was empty at the time of the crash. The whole team was out there in the back. And as soon as I got out of the car, I just, I hugged everybody. So I was very, very happy that they were okay. The 19 and 20 year old carjacking suspects are facing charges, including carjacking, DUI and child endangerment. Also in their Subaru were two women and two children, ages three and five. All were treated for minor injuries and the women were also arrested. Today, the Rebecca Zahau case was back in the spotlight after her family's attorney filed a petition to obtain sheriff's investigative documents into her death. They say San Diego Sheriff Bill Gore withheld crucial documents, which include interoffice communications and instructions given to deputies. The 32-year-old was found dead at the Spreckles Mansion in Coronado in 2011. Her death was ruled a suicide, but her family has maintained that she was murdered. A ruling on the release of those documents is expected on Monday. Families impacted by the deadly plane crash in Santee last month now have more than $20,000 to help them rebuild. The Wendy's on Mission Gorge Road held a fundraiser late last month and are donating 100% of the money spent at the restaurant that day to the Morris and Campbell families. 
Both families lost their homes when a small plane slammed into their neighborhood, killing the pilot and a UPS driver on the ground and then destroying two homes.